Now um, I'm going to ask you to imagine one more of our speakers here. <laughs> and um, he is going to join us. It's Dr. Mitchell Resnick from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Mitch, it's so good to see you. Thanks so much for making the time to talk today. Um, Dr. Mitchell Resnick, the Lego Patrick Professor of Learning Research at the MIT Media Lab, where you lead the lifelong kindergarten research group. Um, it's May 7th here in Albany, California, and I think it's, it, are you in Cambridge today? I'm in Cambridge, so I'm sorry I won't be able to come to Anji for the conference. I'm sorry to miss it, but I'm glad we're getting able to, we'll have a chance to talk now yeah, and no, to share some of the ideas. Fantastic, yeah, so it's, so it's 5 p.m. in Cambridge, and for everyone in the audience right now, it's Wednesday, May 15th, and we're all together at the first international True Play conference. Over the last few days, an incredible group of people have come together to learn about Anji Play and True Play, um, and in addition to our deeply engaged discussions and sharing, we've also had the opportunity to visit a number of public early childhood programs. Um, and so Ms. Chung and I have had the honor to visit Lifelong Kindergarten Group um, at MIT Media Lab twice over the last four years. Uh, we were able to come together again with Mitch in, in Billund. Um, and I know, Mitch, that you had a chance to meet with Ms. Chung in Beijing. Um, at the same time, your colleagues at Play Futures have visited Anji, um, whereas you haven't had a chance yet. And so we're really excited for you to have a chance to visit. Um, and so you can learn a lot more about Mitch Resnick's work uh, Dr. Resnick's work on the monitors to your left and to your right. Um, and so really, Mitch, I, I only have two questions, and, and one is about your work, um, and one is about Ms. Chung's work, and the work of the educators of Anji, uh, who are really committed to the Anji play approach and this philosophy of learning. And so I'm going to start with a question for you. Um, and so when you and Ms. Chung spoke together at Harvard last year, you spoke about the four Ps of creative learning. You spoke about projects, peers, passion, and play. Can you tell me more about how you see the relationship between projects and peers and how projects take shape between peers um, in an environment of, of passion and play? Well, I think all of the work that we do is really focused on helping children develop as creative thinkers. Because we think there's nothing more important in today's society than the ability to think and act creatively. You know, we know that the world is changing so quickly that today's children you know, will be confronted with the never ending stream of unknown and uncertain and unpredictable situations. So they'll need to be able to come up with innovative approaches to the unexpected things they encounter. And I think we've come up with this model of the four P's, projects, passion, peers, and play, as a framework to help children develop as creative thinkers. Uh, and we've been very inspired by places like Anji and Ms. Chung's work because we think that that's a great example of putting the four Ps into practice. So for us, you know, I think too often schools are organized by presenting a problem to children. They give an answer that's right or wrong. They move on to the next problem. Rather than focusing on a string of problems they're given to children, we focus on projects where children are sort of coming up with an idea, creating a project, exploring it, developing it, collaborating with others, because we see that's the best way for them to be developing as creative thinkers. I think that's the way most of us work. We spend most of our lives working on projects, whether it's in our personal life of, we, you know, we you know, organize a birthday party for a friend, that's a project. Or in our work, we're constantly working on projects. And we think children are gonna learn best and be most motivated when they're working on project, coming up with an idea, developing it, coming up, creating a, an example, sharing it with others, getting feedback, and then constantly iterating on that. That's the project design process that we think is you know, so important. And projects link with the other Ps. You asked about projects and peers, uh, because we don't see a project as something that you just work on by yourself in isolation. I think people have often gotten the wrong idea by looking at the great Rodin sculpture of the thinker. And the thinker is sitting there in deep contemplation by himself. And we know most creative thinking doesn't happen that way. Uh, most creative thinking happens in collaboration with others. We work with others, we get ideas from others, we build on other people's ideas. 
we get feedback and suggestions and encouragement from others. Uh, so the most creative work always involves working with peers, learning with and from peers. So that's projects and peers. And then passion, I think we know that, you know, children, but also adults are willing to work longer and harder and persist in the face of challenges when they're working on things that they really care about, things they're passionate about. So we're always looking to see how can we make sure that children have a chance to work on things that are sort of connected to their heart. So it's not just about connecting to ideas, the things they really care about where they dive in and make deep connections. We see that children make deeper connections to the ideas uh, when they work on things they really care about, when they're passionate about. And then the fourth P of play, which we also see in Anji, it's part of the name of Anji play and true play. Actually, I think here sometimes people misinterpret play I think Ms. Chung sees this as well. Sometimes people hear the word play and they just think of laughing and having fun. And of course, it could be great to laugh and have fun. But I think when we talk about play and when I think it, when Ms. Chung talks about play, it's something very different. Uh, it's about, you know, when you have a playful approach, it's not just an action, it's an attitude. When you have a playful attitude, it means you're willing to take risks and try new things an experiment. And I think that connects to this idea of true play. And we think of similarly, we want to engage children where they're constantly experimenting, trying new things, because we think that's where the most creative learning is going to happen when people do that. That's, that's, that's interesting. And I think that when I think about how Ms. Chung frames sort of the conditions of play and she has sort of love and risk and joy and engagement and reflection, you know, I hear in projects, I hear this deep sense of engagement. Right, and you know how engagement, when it comes intrinsically and rather than extrinsically, mm -hmm. you know you have passion, right? So that's that self determination, that's the expression of one's own intention, and then kind of the space to share it and then learn together, right? And so that could be a risk, the social risk, or there mm -hmm. can be cognitive risk in trying something where you the uncertain future, right? Where you're looking at something that you don't know what the outcome is going to be, and you might have peers there with you. And so that what we, what we think of maybe what we might call like a spirit of play, yeah, or just sort of that, that deep, deep learning that comes from a deep engagement with your environment and with your peers. Yeah. Um, but we sometimes call, actually, I, in my book here, I don't know if you can see this, yeah. I'm holding this diagram that you can also show on the screen. We call it the creative learning spiral. Huh. Like it starts with imagining. So mm -hmm. it's not that you're just given a problem, but you imagine you, again, you see children on the playground their imagination runs wild and they come up with new ideas. But it's not enough just to have the ideas, not just to imagine. Yeah. You then create something. You start working on something based on your imagination. Yeah. You start experimenting and trying things out. Uh, and then you work with others. And again, you see this in the playground with, when children start working together. So they collaborate with others. They try things. Uh, other people give them the feedback. Well, why not try it this way? Uh, let's do it that way. And then from all of that, from the experimenting and the collaboration and the sharing, things happen and then it leads to reflection. So something goes wrong that you didn't expect and you think, why did that happen? How might I do it differently? So that reflection is an important part of, the, of that creative learning spiral. We're constantly diving in, but then stepping back and reflecting. And there's this constant you know, dance between diving in and reflecting. My, former colleague Edith Ackerman, who sadly passed away a few years ago, she saw it as a dance of this immersing yourself, diving in, and then stepping back and reflecting, and going back and forth. And it's part of that spiral that as you reflect, you then get new ideas, you start imagining new things, and you're in that spiral again of trying out new things, working with others, things might go wrong, and then you start reflecting and it sparks new ideas. Yeah, and so there's, there's kind of that, again, that flow around your relationship to others and to the problems or the, the conditions of the environment around you. And so in Anji, what, what you'll see when you visit and what I hope everyone here has seen is how environments that have trust and freedom in them that allow, that, that, that allow for the child to master their own environment, mm -hmm. that provide materials that are movable and masterable and recombinable so that the body can feel all of those elements, right? So the natural elements, gravity, right? Gravity is nature, it's 
the Chinese would be Tian. Tian, and you've got Yuan, you've got Di. So you've got the heavens, and you've got people, and then you've got the ground. And sort of the ground is the foundation, it's where you're drawn to. And you have all these things that you can do in relationship to those conditions. And so in Anji, um, you'll see like weather journals where children every day are taking note of the weather, or the way teachers will frame the child's description of their own experience, the naming of their own experience. They might say, so they'll use the, the, the voice of a teacher to ask, oh, what, what, what problems did you encounter? Oh, what did you discover? Or how did you solve that? So these clarifying or open-ended questions become part of that cycle of reflection. And so what's interesting to me is that there have been ways that learning has been framed in terms of like planning, doing, and then reviewing. And then in Anji, we see something which is more like doing, reviewing, and then planning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anji, you have you have play plans where kids go on whiteboards and they draw, you know, the the building they're going to build. You know, they'll write out a number of blocks or where they where they fit or who's responsible for what. And that now comes before the play, but it only develops after their child, the children were reviewing what they needed, and the teacher was listening and reviewing what they thought the children might need. And so the kids were taking out paper and drawing their blocks. So the teacher said, well, maybe whiteboards, right? Mm -hmm. And so then it becomes, and then it becomes part of the culture. So you, it's hard to see where one thing begins and one thing ends. And I guess that's sort of the metacognitive reflective part of the practices and the environment. Um, and so- We sometimes talk about this, you know, distinction between sort of planning and tinkering. Mm -hmm. So again, especially when you're making things, I think oftentimes schools introduce it that you study a situation, you carefully come up with a plan, then you execute it and you're done. And the way we see the most creative work happening and what we want to support, and it comes out of children's natural curiosity, is to dive in, experiment, but then you're always doing these mini plans because as you dive in and do an experiment, you're coming up with a little plan to try it out and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, and then you revise your plan, you keep adjusting it. So of course there's planning going on, but it's part of a constant experimentation. And we want to make sure that children have the opportunity to do that type of constant experimentation and mini plans that you keep adjusting back and forth over time and that they get fully integrated. And unfortunately, in too many school settings, they don't get that chance. And, uh, it, and they're led to believe that the best way of doing things is develop a plan, execute it, and then you're done. And that's seen as like the efficient way of doing it, but it doesn't lead to creative work. Yeah. And so if you think about experimentation as sort of a plan around the unknown, yeah. or a hypothesis, right? So there's the, there's the cognitive risk in learning. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I have to make these little mini plans to assess what like the Bayesian sort of assess the inputs from the past and those causal relationships, and then think about how that will affect what might happen next if I put my one foot on the port or if I stack you know seven blocks that way so there's a way in which yeah the planning like you said planning is part of everything we do because we're constantly assessing sort of what our actions our efficacy or whatever what effect we're going to have on others or the world and then what effect it'll have on us and i like you you talked about you know giving children the freedom to do this experimenting and exploring but again one of the things that i love when i see the videos of angie Yes, there's a lot of freedom that children are exploring, but there's a lot of structure that's built into it as well. It's not that they're told what to do step by step, but of course, all the materials on the playground, those were carefully thought through. And it's a, there's a lot of structure in the environment that you know, is not seen as the same typical, the typical school structure of you know, the, the regiment to do this, this, but the structure allows kids to you know, support, it provides support for their freedom. So the freedom works because of the structure. Right, and so it's really interesting though, and uh, Dr. Peter Mangioni, who's also on this panel, I did an interview with him about his first experience visiting Anji. So he has this, this background in the assessment of learning and infant and toddler development and sort of how, you, how what care is responsive to the needs of children and what are the optimal conditions for their learning. And it was so interesting because when I was interviewing him, when he was, um, you know, kind of telling me his story of his first visit, he talked about the freedom and the space and the joy, but then he talked about it being regulated. And what he meant by regulated was a kind of internal regulation mm -hmm. that came from those larger structures in place, that the teacher was the authority, that 
the teacher provided love, but also created a safe environment. The teacher was creating these environments that showed trust. And then the teacher was, and the school and the community was creating schedules, right? So that play ends when play ends, when play needs to end. But, you know, there is lunch and there is a time when play is over. And most kids will go in and some kids will stay out because, as you said, these specifically designed materials, um, you know, and so sometimes we tie, tie like in this time's work to Montessori's work because Montessori built these just brilliant materials, right? Like Montessori materials are genius. And Ms. Chung has created a different type of material that works in, in, the, in similar and different ways. Um, and, you know, they have these materials that they could master that the movement of those materials from place to place is part of their responsibility because that environment trusts them to have the freedom to move those materials back and forth and from place to place. And so then those structures provide the affordance, right? So if all the other kids are in, but you have two teachers for 30 kids, one teacher can stay out with the six kids that just have need more energy and are the team that loves to clean things up and they can come back. And so when all those structures are about creating the optimum conditions for in that experience of play, the teacher to be present and observant and the child to have mastery of and the ability to shape and create their environment. And then the space on their walls in the classroom to acquire, to measure, to name, and then to reflect on and have reflected upon by the teacher what the teacher is trying to understand is their knowledge or their ability. That it's a specific paradigm. It's I like how several times you've emphasized this idea of trust, which I also think is really important. Uh, actually, with my colleague, Natalie Rusk, mm -hmm. Natalie and I started these after school centers called computer clubhouses. And one of the guiding principles for the clubhouse was to create an environment of trust and respect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people see that and say, oh yeah, trust and respect, and that's like, they interpret as though we're treating good manners to respect one another. And of course, it's good to be part of a society where you're respectful. But we also felt that none of the creative work would happen without an environment of trust and respect. That, if, that both that we you know, trust and respect the children, we expect them to trust and respect one another, but only in that environment will they be willing and comfortable to take the risks that are necessary for creative learning that if they try something and then they're scolded or ridiculed when things go wrong, they're not gonna take the risks or, or experiment in the ways that are necessary for them to do the creative learning that, that we know is so important. Yeah, and, and even if the environment communicates a certain decision about what is necessary for the child or where that child is, even that is kind of a movement away from what Ms. Chung is talking about, right? So, mm -hmm. so if the environment is an expression of the children's mastery or then the description of their experience, then like that's what they see, that's what's on the walls, rather than this is what you should learn now, or this is where you are, this is what you're capable of, and this is what we want you to have. And so in that sense, there's so much, it's so consistent with all of these really meaningful, really revolutionary changes to education. And I, and I think that if you look at Pestalozzi or Froebel or Dewey or Piaget or Montessori or Malaguzzi, you know, or, or, or Seymour Papert, you know, that really, innovation around thinking about learning comes from being just an active observer of people naturally engaged in learning. When you think about a foal, a foal learns how to walk in what, a couple, a couple weeks? You know, they're, we're just programmed to learn these really complex things. Mm -hmm. And so the people like you who understand how we learn, I think are just these incredible observers. Yeah. And, so, and, and I think in all the people that you had mentioned they all focus on the importance of children interacting with the world around them, that we learn through our interactions, uh, that you know, it's not just about absorbing of, of knowledge, but learning through that interaction and how can we set up the right conditions for children to you know, design, create, interact, and explore. And that's the way that they'll you know, both you know, challenge their current models and develop new models. And so really this is, can I ask Ms. Chung's question? And it's great because, you know, I feel like you, you more or less answered it in your first mm -hmm. response to my question, which is what experience of childhood and learning is necessary as we encounter an uncertain or unknowable future? And what is it that we need to change most now? Yeah. Well, I do think that because children face such an uncertain and unknowable future, that the ability to think and act creatively is more important than ever. So helping children build up those creative capacities 
And oftentimes, early in childhood, we do a great job with this, you know, the, of allowing children to, ex to explore and develop their curiosity. And too often, as children go on in their schooling, we deprive them of those opportunities. They spend too much time sitting in desks, filling out worksheets, listening to lectures, and don't develop their creative capacities. We call our group Lifelong Kindergarten because we're inspired by places like Anji and other of the great kindergartens in the world. And we're gonna bring that to learners of all ages because we do think that the, the, the magic that happens in wonderful kindergartens like in Anji is the way not just for five-year-olds to learn, but for all of us to continue to learn in a world that's constantly changing. We all need to continue to learn in that kindergarten style. So I think we're always looking at how we can continue to support that kindergarten style of learning for learners of all ages. Now, of course, over time, we want learners to explore more complex situations and to learn more complex you know, concepts, but they still can do it in that same kindergarten style. We've tried to do that in our own workplace here at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, and of course, if you come to the Media Lab, there'll be more advanced materials and technologies than in a traditional kindergarten. You'll see laser cutters and 3D printers and microcontrollers and advanced technologies. But the way that the students, the, you know, the graduate students and the researchers engage with those materials and tools is the same the way that children engage with finger paint and blocks and playground you know, equipment by playfully you know, exploring and creating things in collaboration with one another. So we try to take it seriously. And I think the reason that the place where I work, the MIT Media Lab has developed an international reputation for creativity is because we run it like a big kindergarten. So we've seen that it happens in kindergartens like Anji. We take those same lessons and apply it to a technology research lab like MIT Media Lab, and we see that the, cre the creativity flourishes. So we just now need to work together to change the rest of the world and to bring those same ideas and principles to allow everybody to you know, playfully create and explore in collaboration with one another. Well, I look forward to, I hope, doing that work together, that work together with everybody here in Anji and, and with Ms. Chung and, and your colleagues and your friends. And um, I just wanted to thank you. Um, and yeah, so again, I, I apologize again that I couldn't be there in person, but it's great to get a chance. I've, I've loved my interactions with Ms. Chung and other, with you and others associated with Anji. It's great to have this conversation and look forward to, as we try to make these bigger changes in the world, it's more than any one person or organization can do. So we need to find the kindred spirits. So for me, I, I've really found that Anji, a kindred spirit that shares some of the same goals, you know, for what we hope for, for children. And I'm sure many of the people in the audience there are also kindred spirits. And hopefully we can all work together to try to open new opportunities to help children around the world, you know, grow up to express themselves creatively and to be prepared for an ever changing world. In the spirit of play. Together. So, thank you, um, Professor Resnick Mitch. It was a real pleasure. Um, Great. Hope to see you again soon. Good. Good talk with you. Look forward to seeing you soon.